Hello everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. Uh, this is Mohit Agarwal and today we have Dr. Vinish uh, Sukumar with us from Qualcomm. And we are going to talk about uh, LLMs uh, on uh, the edge devices, particularly the mobile devices. So welcome, uh, Dr. Sukumar. So my first question to you would be, uh, like we are talking a lot about uh, LLMs being there on the mobile phones, uh, but we know that uh, the models that we have are pretty big and the, to run it on the edge devices, it will be quite a challenge. So how do you see that uh, we'll be able to reduce the size of the uh, models while we are running on mobile phones? Uh, great question, Mohit. And uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, as you rightly mentioned, um, large language models, mm -hmm. if you take by definition, uh, the sweet spot last year was approximately 7 billion parameters. Right. So 7 billion parameters by definition would be give or take about, um, I would say, 13 gigabytes of memory footprint. And most of the uh, handset devices, you know, are between 8 to about 12 GB. And in the Asian markets, between 12 to 16 GB in that range. So as you rightly point out, it's going to be extremely difficult to really package these large models mm -hmm. into a very constrained environment of handsets. Now, there are many ways to you know, look at how do you, you know, compress these models. One, obviously, is quantization. Uh, quantization wherein you can take these models, you can quantize it to four bits, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for weights, or even two bits. Uh, you know, obviously, it comes with accuracy challenges. So you put a lot of focus on algorithms wherein you can uh, improve the accuracy and then map it very similar to what would have existed in a floating point definition. Now, most of the models that have been commercially deployed is approximately W4, A16, wherein activations are 16 bits and weights are 4 bits. And by doing it, you're able to compress it to give or take about 3.5 to 4 gig compared to 13 gig of a 16 bits. So definitely 3x reduction. All right. Next element is, you know, when you look at these large models, again, taking 7 billion as an example, uh, it's a foundational model, meaning that it has been trained on everything out there. Yeah. You want to make it much more task specific or domain specific. Then the question becomes is, how do I uh, fine tune it for that specific task? So the question then becomes is, you know, can I have a specific data set that is trained for a domain? Of the task. As you start looking at it, then that specific large model by definition becomes extremely specific for that specific task. All right. Once you have it, then the question becomes is can I, um, you know, what do you call compress the model further by, you know, uh, uh, taking out few nodes of interest and then, you know, getting it smaller. Mm -hmm. And this is how what we call a small language model comes up or SLMs by definition, which is pruned version of large models which have been fine tuned for a specific domain or a task. Now, um, it's always important to start with a larger model because that will give you the flexibility to create a smaller model for a specific task or a domain. Now, most of these SLMs can come to two or three billion parameters for that stuff. Good. Now, the other element of it is, um, you know, can I do instruction fine tuning is what the question becomes. So, in other words, can I go towards a much more smaller model, but I have longer prompt and the definition has larger context and has a much better prediction accuracy. So this is something that's evolving. You know, there's a lot of integration with retrieval augmentation, what we call as RAG on device. There's a lot of conversations about interfacing that with knowledge graphs. So as such, you don't really need a very large model. You can have a much more smaller model that is mapped on to what we call as prompt engineering to give you a much better response. I mean, a lot of techniques, but this is how the industry is trending towards the point. Right, and, and you did mention like, two or three different techniques. So is it possible to mix and match as well or uh, you can't do that? I think it's a great question. Uh, from my perspective, I believe you can absolutely do that. I think it really depends upon who your audience is, what problem statement you're trying to solve, what is the key performance indicators. So yes, definitely, you know, I'm going to have a both. Mm -hmm. I suspect, um, you know, especially when you are looking at uh, elements like uh, document summarization as an example. Document summarization could be a financial document summarization, uh, could be an email document in a summarization, or could be a notification summarization. But if you want to have the same uh, experience across three different, uh, what do you call, applications, you can use the same you know, large model. All right. Now, it may not be the best, but it does the job for you. Mm -hmm. But in this case, there are going to be uh, maybe a premium handsets wherein you want to make it extremely fine-tuned for a customer, wherein you want to summarize the notifications or you want to summarize on emails, then you want to have a very small language model fine-tuned for emails or fine-tuned for notifications. So that's how I would see it, depending upon the swim lane, depending upon what experience you want to push for. 
uh, you know, these things can evolve. All right. And, and uh, you also mentioned that, uh, you know, maybe you can have just one model or you can have multiple models. So again, the key question comes back is, uh, if you look at most of the smartphones, you would have a memory of what, 8 gig or uh, 12 gig. Yeah. And uh, even if you were to contest, uh, like make this uh, model smaller, then also we are talking about three and a half to four GB uh, of RAM. And if you were to run multiple, uh, yeah, uh, multiple models, it will be a, still be a problem. So do you see on the mobile phones, we'll have uh, multiple models running tomorrow or will you have LLM as a service uh, with uh, different uh, uh, applications doing an API call? Yeah, so I think it's a great question, uh, Mohit. As uh, we talked about before, you know, we, this can be implemented in many ways. One option definitely is wherein, um, uh, you know, I earlier referenced about small language models wherein you can look at uh, being specifically uh, fine-tuned for a domain or a task. <laughs> And depending on that, you can invoke that function. But by definition, also comes with the baggage of a RAM footprint. Then you can have the second option, wherein you can have one large foundational or a frontier model. And then you have multiple adapters, which have been fine-tuned for a specific task. And depending upon the instance, you can invoke that adapter to get it done. All right. Or the third option is, uh, which also the industry is looking at, is what you have the agentic or the hybrid flows, is wherein you can have certain tasks completed on the edge and a certain task completed on the cloud. But for that option, you definitely need API, interface or what you were referring to as uh, LLM APIs. All right. So now how the industry is going to trend is anybody's guess. I think uh, depending upon the use case, depending on the region, uh, depending upon price point, uh, and even depending upon the RAM footprint, I'm sure one or the other will you know, take advantage. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sukumar. I think those are important questions that we are grappling with. The industry is grappling with that. And uh, I think we are in for some exciting times ahead uh, and looking forward to how the industry rolls it up. Oh, uh, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.